It's like a storm It cuts a path It breaks your will It feels like that Welcome to Heart to Heart about everything lupus where we discuss everything about lupus. I'm Susie Eagles Flight and I am from Lupus South Africa and Andrea's Gift. Today we are going to talk about another tough subject, lupus and caregivers, partners, parents and children of those with lupus. We hear how they feel and they give advice to others. So this one is for you and your family and friends. After a recent family discussion, I realized we needed to hear their hearts too. And just like us, they need to hear that they aren't alone. So after you finish with this one, send it to your people, family, friends, children, whatever. By the way, get some tissues for this one. So. Get a cup of nice hot coffee or tea, put your earphones in, sit in a relaxing chair and let the two of us discuss lupus. How to take care of a loved one with lupus. Just like us, our loved ones need help and advice in dealing with lupus and taking care of a loved one with lupus. This is helpful for us to hear how they feel and this makes a difference in being understood and supported and have a better quality of life. So we asked some family members to answer questions for us and we will listen to them later in this podcast. We will. We will also hear from someone who has lost a loved one um, to lupus because I know of family members on our groups that are grieving. But before we start hearing from them, here are a few pointers on taking care of someone with lupus. But we will cover caretaking in full in another podcast. So please know these are only basic points. Here are some steps you can take today for better support for your loved one with lupus. Educate yourself about lupus, work on healthy communication, be supportive, create a care file and develop a daily care plan. When a person with lupus develops serious health issues and can no longer function, function independently, someone may need to assume the role of a caregiver. It happens to all of us at some point in time you are ill and you cannot take care of yourself and even day to day things somebody takes care of certain stuff in your life if you are fun functioning more bit better than usual the more you know about lupus and how to cope with it the better prepared you are to be a good caregiver understanding the disease can make the initial transition into caregiving a little less intimidating. It can also help you determine a caregiving plan that meets specific needs for your loved one. None of us does this for a living if you're not a nurse or a medical profession. So you don't know what to do. Um, the lupus patient now needs more than usual and you have no experience whatsoever so these pointers just helps you to be a better caregiver and understand and take care of your loved one it's not easy to to be a caregiver to a loved one um, because this is was not planned at all it's not your loved one's fault that they are ill but it's a difficult transition because um, you now have to do more and this person now needs you much more than what a healthy person would need you. So it's a difficult transition and everybody freaks out and is anxious and it, so it's better to, to work and get information so that you can make this an easy transition for the whole family. 
First of all, understand lupus. Educate yourself about the nature of lupus and the symptoms of the disease. We have an Afrikaans video, an English video that discusses the basics of lupus. Uh, we have pamphlets, we have other videos, we have the spoon theory. So please go look at our social media, Lupus South Africa, Susie Eelsright and Andrea's Gift to find um, resources to educate yourself. Be aware of how lupus is affecting your loved one physically and emotionally. They are experiencing pain. So they will, they, that is, they are physically um, going to need support. And emotionally, I mean, you can think, just to be, be told that you have um, an incurable disease and then having to live with pain each day, it's a huge emotional impact. Be open to change. Remember, that loved one is never going to be the person that they were. And you also, because of this extra burden upon your family. But be open to change. Change things in your health, in your family, um, so that you are open to change and implement stuff that makes life easier for you. Be emotionally considerate. That goes for lupus patients and their families because the family and the patients are going through emotional turmoil and stress and anxiety and everything. So you must think, put yourself in that person's shoes, whether it's a patient or the caregiver. You have to um, think on how will you feel, how does it feel to have to do all this or be in so much pain and how the loved one learn more about lupus. If they um, don't, know, don't know much about the disease, show them videos, give them pamphlets, educate them so that they know what their body is going to do and do not stress when something happens. Communicate. Lupus is a big adjustment. Make time to talk about how the transition is affecting you. Yeah, as a family, talk about what's happening and what you need to change in the family unit. Make sure you are aiming for a healthy exchange of information. Don't fight, don't scream, say how you feel, but don't be negative and attacking and aggressive. Talk about whatever is going on. Talk about minor and major problems caused about lupus because there are going to be minor things for example who's going to wash the dishes at night and there's going to be major problems um, i'm not be able to work so how are we going to cope with the financial burden that's a major problem reach out to others whether you're a patient or a caregiver um, there are we have social media platforms um, where you can reach out. We have support groups. Please contact us if you need help. Be open about your needs. Tell, um, if you're a patient or a caregiver, tell your family about what you need and um, be considerate to each other's needs and work on a plan to resolve the, the needs in the future. Be supportive, but be aware not to overreact when they are unwell or very sick, which is normal to a lupus patient. Allow them their independence as much as possible. Um, yeah, I know patient, people overreact when somebody is very ill, but try to um, understand and be supportive um, and um, in that situation because you are the one that needs to stay calm if you are the caregiver if the patient freaks out you know so that you can calm them down and you can deal with whatever is happening but also allow them their independence because sometimes lupus patients feel that um, they are under a watchful eye everybody's looking at them they want to be independent in certain ways and that's where communication also comes in because 
ask and talk about um, what the patient will need or what he does he or she doesn't need so that you know not to do it and some independence makes we makes a patient feel worthful again um, it makes you feel wanted and needed in some part some days you won't be able to do anything but help and discuss with each other what to do create a care file a journal from Andreas give is your family members version of a care file and then you can make a care file for yourself differently i have in the show notes provided a link to a pdf of a care file which is a guideline you can make your own or you can use it the agf andres gives journal that you can buy from andres gift um, has all that's needed for your loved one you keep track of symptoms write down emotions medication doctors etc so that's a nice care file for them but the guideline for the caregiver is in the notes below and um, what it includes is who is the caregiver what's the relationship so that people know um, at a glimpse who, who to call and who to take care of and um, emergency contact numbers of family members your medical aid um, yeah all those basic stuff um, is in the care file um, so um, and the medications you can put in there um, the dosages and when they take it you can put in there so at the glance uh, you know what to do um, if you have to run out and somebody has to take care of the lupus patient all the information is in the care file then develop a daily care plan this is very important uh, document your loved ones medication dietary restrictions and other daily care even dogs this is very important uh, because um, if your loved one even if they aren't ill um, very ill and they are able to do stuff or even if they aren't able to do stuff the daily care plan helps a lot because um, it has first of all it has your diagnosis um, the date of the doctor diagnosed you the symptoms your allergies your medications um, you know um, that what the meals um, doctor appointments and note and what helps with this is um, you know if you should see a doctor the doctor can actually uh, see how what the patient's symptoms was how to take care of them if you go to the hospital this will help them see what are they dealing with what's the medications so um, you know we are always moving to a more structured environment for a lupus patient because it's less stress for you and less stress for them so yeah that's a caregiving file um, so the above being said uh, we let's get into the interviews um, that we had with children parents partners and caregivers of some warriors um, in, on our groups um, because we wanted to hear their heart and to give advice I mean I've been here I've had lupus for 17 years even longer we don't know um, and I still learn more about lupus every day so it's very important to hear what others have to say their opinions their advice so I only gave them two questions uh, the questions two questions are um, how does it feel to have a family member with lupus and the second question is what advice can you give other family members of warriors so those are the three questions so let's go into our first interview uh, our first interview is with Sky and her mom Michelle has lupus This is what it is like having a mom with lupus. You always need to check up on her to see if she's okay or if she just wants to have a chat and have you listen. Sometimes you may need to lend an extra hand here and there. Sometimes you may need to remind your mom of what she is about to do or where she puts something due to her brain fog and that's okay. You need to always reassure your mom that she is loved and you are proud of every small thing she accomplishes. Having a mom with lupus feels amazing, as I know I have one of the strongest moms ever. 
All that my mom has accomplished while she has fought her lupus battle is just unbelievable. The one day my mom woke up feeling great, so we decided to head outside into nature, which is my mom's favorite. We ended up conquering a steep, long hike down and back up a waterfall. This was not an easy challenge, but my mom was up for it. With constant support and motivation, she made it all the way down and all the way back up. And I couldn't have been any more proud of my mom. It feels amazing to call my mom a lupus warrior through her good and bad days. I love you, mom. Here are a few tips and advice for those who have a mom or dad with lupus. I've learned to appreciate the smallest of things in life. First small thing I've learned to appreciate is being able to climb out of my bed without an ounce of pain in my body. Secondly, being able to go through a full day with a full bar of energy. Thirdly, being able to complete small daily tasks, for example, washing a plate or making my bed. The reason I pointed out these three points is because sometimes my mom can't accomplish any of these points and someday she can. Having a mom with lupus, you need to be patient, gentle, a helper and a listener all in one. Be patient. You need to have patience if your mom wakes up and it's one of those days where she can't complete those three points we spoke about. Some days she can own the day and other days she needs some extra love that comes with a lot of patience. On top of that, you need to be patient when planning things in advance. You never know what your mom might feel like that day. Don't get angry or upset because you planned something and your mom is not okay on that day. This is the day where your mom needs you the most. Make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and just listen to her. Be gentle. On my mom's bad days, I have learned to do things gently. What I mean by this is, I won't turn the TV on too loud. I won't open the curtain as wide as I usually do. I won't make fast or loud movements around her. I do this because on those bad days, my mom is very sensitive towards light, sound and fast movements. Be a helper. When my mom is having a bad day, I know this is my day to lend an extra hand. Things my mom could do yesterday, she might not, not, might not be able to do today. With that being said, I make sure that I assure her that I am just a stone throw away if she needs any help, no matter how big or small. And that's okay. Be a listener. This is the most important at as anyone with lupus or another autoimmune disease may feel like no one ever listens and no one will ever understand. Yes, I may never understand, but I promise I will try my utmost best to understand and I will always listen with no judgment. Make a cup of coffee or pour a glass of cold water and just ask, Hey mom, how have you been feeling today? And all you do from there is listen and try to understand. This will mean the world to your mom or dad that has lupus. Thank you so much. Our second interview is with Neil and his daughter Courtney has lupus. How does it feel to have a child with lupus? When your child gets sick with something like lupus, you feel totally helpless. You're incapable of protecting them and there's nothing you can do to make them better. So anger and frustration at your helplessness is never far away. My daughter was eight when she was diagnosed with lupus and they did so much blood work on her that they could no longer find a vein. Once, after many failed attempts, she buried her little head into my shoulder and sobbed. Please, Daddy, don't let them hurt me again. A situation I would not wish on any parent. I got frustrated with the doctor, the nurses, the medical aid, and all the time you're on edge because this is your baby and you can't do anything. Being on edge the whole time is something you just have to live with. Every cough, every yawn from your child makes you worry. But through all this, you have to be strong for your child and just love them. 
What advice could I give parents of a child with lupus? Every child in every situation is different, and I in no way want to suggest that the approach that my wife and I use with our daughter is the best option available. From early on, we decided that we would share everything with our daughter. We felt she was mature enough to understand the situation, and this would help her make well-informed decisions in the future. For us, it worked. But the trade-off to this was that she had to mature so quickly that she missed out on just being a child. As parents who have a child who has just been diagnosed with lupus, you will spend hours and hours looking on Google. Please do not spend your time looking for quick cures and magical drugs. You only drive yourself crazy while doing this. Please, however, educate yourself on lupus. The more you know, the more you can understand and the quicker you can pick up changes in your child. Please also educate your friends and family on lupus. The more they understand, the less, but she looks well, comments you will get. My daughter is an avid lupus awareness campaigner and that is something that we are very proud of. But some parents prefer that no one knows that they have a child with lupus. There is no right nor wrong answer here. But I would suggest that you agree as a family on how you will handle it and then support your child fully going forward. Let your child find their happy place and let them go there as much as they can. It could be on the couch, watching a series on TV, reading a book, or just sitting in the garden, but always be aware of how important downtime is for them. As a family, smile a lot and laugh a lot, even if it's hard to do. It is good for the soul and it helps take the edge off things, not only for you, but for your child as well. Lastly, don't do this journey alone if you can help it. Joining a support group is not a sign of weakness, even if it's just to scream on the group. They understand and know everyone has to vent sometimes. Ow. Third interview is with Nico. He is my husband, the poor man. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nico, Susie van der Waals' husband. How does it feel to have a partner that has lupus? Well, first off, mm -hmm. I'm speaking from a standpoint where both partners are in love with each other and they both have a healthy respect for each other. And from the start, my wife Susie and I I've had this passion to develop our relationship and to guard honesty, trust, communication and loyalty. And if it wasn't for this solid foundation that we have both built over the years, it would have been extremely hard to either to either of us to live with lupus. Susie and I have been married for 17 years now and it was only for the first two years that lupus played a reasonably low to insignificant role. Ever since she has been diagnosed with lupus two years into our marriage, it has become progressively worse as lupus started to break her body down more and more. In the beginning, it was really hard and it placed a huge strain on our relationship as we were unable to either plan an event or to do fun things at the spur of a moment as we usually did. It was hard to accept the fact that life was never going to be the same again if we were to remain married, but to me, opting out was not an option. You see, I loved my wife too much to leave her in this debilitating and severe condition all on her own. And I realized that I would have to pull up my big boy pants and to rise to the occasion as a real man should. I made a decision to become devoted with a mission to be the husband on which my wife could count. I mean, what if it was me that had lupus? Would I appreciate it if my wife either could not or would not understand? How would I feel if I became too much for her and I had to lose the love of my life because of what lupus did to me? It is a cold hard fact that I had to face, accept and be devoted to make the changes in my expectation of what the future holds for us and to find peace in embracing a new lifestyle that would accommodate us 
Susie and I and Lupus and purposefully find joy and fulfillment and experience each other's love in the newfound lifestyle if you will so you ask me how it feels to have a partner that is lupus well we may not be like most healthy couples that are able to go outside spend time outdoors and you know just enjoy fun things at the drop of a hat but i love my wife too much to dream of any other lifestyle i would not change what we have and how close we are to each other and the love that we share and what we have with each other for anything else in this world because if I had to choose I would rather choose Susie with lupus than not have Susie or, and have anyone else or no one else at all what advice would I give to people with a lupus partner what I've learned is that there is nothing more fulfilling in life than living a life with purpose and there is no purpose more fulfilling than having truly meaningful and fulfilling relationships with those special people in your life and when you have a life partner then that person would be your most fulfilling reason for achieving purpose now believe me I have made many mistakes and I've been very selfish and I have often thought of myself and you know what we have to deal with and life could have been so much better but when I've made the decision to become devoted to my special person and to treat her with the love and respect that I would want her to treat me if I was in her shoes then it is then that I become fulfilling knowing that I am making the most amazing difference being that superman for her and to her and um, thereby live a life of fulfillment and this is the advice that I would like to give because there has been nothing more fulfilling to be that person that my wife can count on and that she can love and respect and honor and adore because of the fact that I have been there for her I wouldn't trade that for anything this is my advice our fourth interview is with Jade my daughter Hello everybody, my name is Jade and my mom is Susie van der Walt and most of you know her as the legend herself, Susie Eagles Flight, and she has lupus. How does it feel to have a mom with lupus? So in all the years that my mom has had lupus, no one has ever really officially asked me, how does it feel to have a mom with lupus? So when I was first asked this question, I didn't really know what to say because there's a lot that comes to mind at once because lupus is an unpredictable, traumatizing and a very difficult disease to understand as it attacks absolutely everything in the body. If you can think of any body part, inside or outside, or any chemical or blood cell or hormone in the body, lupus attacks it. I mean, just listening to this description of lupus makes you think, what in the world? <laughs> So when I gave it more thought, I realized that there is no one word feeling that describes what it feels like to have a mom with lupus. And actually, how it feels depends on how my mom is feeling, because no matter how hard or easy her day is, I want to support and work through it with her. Sometimes I feel a lot of anger and frustration and just plain irritated because when her lupus decides to flare up, there's just no cure to make it better. Sometimes I feel absolutely defeated and overwhelmed because the one thing I want to do is fix everything that is wrong. And no matter what I do to try and help, it only sometimes and might get a little bit better and doesn't completely go away. Sometimes I feel scared because I know there's no guarantee my mom is going to wake up tomorrow morning because that's what lupus does. Today she can be feeling able and energetic and tomorrow she could be fighting for her life. Sometimes I feel useless because sometimes there's just nothing I can do but pray. Sometimes I feel tired because sitting outside ICU with your dad at 3am waiting to hear if your mom came back from the dead or not and not just once but three times is exhausting. But on the same note, I feel incredibly honored to have such a superhero for a mom. Who else can say they've come back from the dead? <laughs> and let me just explain myself here. <laughs> Many lupus warriors who need to get rushed to the hospital due to an all of a sudden failure in some part of their body need to get shocked to get their heart pumping after it stopped. 
we have a little joke in the family and that is that my mom is immortal <laughs> because no matter what comes her way she pushes through and never ever gives up on life i feel like i have the strongest mom on earth I feel so empowered to learn from her every single day. And also, I feel as if I have a purpose. I feel pretty special that God has chosen me to be my mom's caregiver. Having such a warrior for a mom makes me see the world very differently too. Witnessing someone go through so much pain and illness every day of her life and still carry on and do things, it makes you self-reflect because if she can do all that while feeling, feeling the way she does, then I have no excuse whatever I'm feeling. And I think all families of lupus warriors also feel like warriors themselves, standing by and working with their loved one through everything lupus brings them. I feel in awe of her every day. And I just want to say, even though it's hard sometimes, if I had to do it all over again, I would. I would still choose my lupus warrior mom over and over and over again because I feel so much love for her and our family's lupus journey has actually made us closer. So yeah, I think it's safe to say it feels amazing. So the advice I would give family members of a lupus warrior is ask questions, take initiative and constantly reassure. So let me start off by explaining what I mean when I say ask questions and how I do that. I ask my mom a million questions every day to try and understand in what state her body is that, so that I know how I can help on that day. When I see her first thing in the morning, I ask, hello mama, how are you feeling? Then she would tell me, okay, her back hurts. Then we would try to figure out together what is causing the back pain and what home treatment we can use to try to make it better. If she tells me her shoulders are, shoulders are spasming, then I know, okay, I need to massage her shoulders for the spasms to release. Then I ask, do you need an extra pain pill? If she tells me her... Uh, if she tells me she has a bladder infection, then I know, okay, I need to prepare a bath with Epsom salts in to soothe the pain and infection. If my mom is doing her daily tasks, I would go and ask her, can her body handle this task right now? Can I help? And I'd actually tell her, explain and tell me how I can help her with this task to make it easier for her. If she told me this morning her hands are sore from the arthritis, then I know I can help with even just opening a bottle of water. If she tells me she is feeling very exhausted, then I know to make sure that I must help where I can so that she doesn't have to overexert her body. And so I carry on my day asking questions, making sure I know how she is feeling and how I can help. Even if I have to just tie her shoelaces or pour her a glass of water or open up the shower tap tonight, if that means helping, then do it. Okay, um, now I'm going to explain what I mean when I say take initiative and why I say take initiative. So why I say take initiative is because most lupus warriors feel extreme guilt when they are unable to do daily tasks because they feel they are just dumping all their responsibilities on the family that already has their own responsibilities. This leads to lupus warriors not wanting to ask their family to do the things they were meant to do because of the guilt they feel, which leads to them stressing about the tasks the, the tasks that needs to be done, which causes their lupus to flare up. Because that's what lupus does. It flares up when their stress levels up, which means they fall even more sick than what they already are. So I try to eliminate and nip this in the bud from the beginning. This is where all the questions come in handy. I would ask even sometimes the day before, what are your plans for the next day? Then I know how I can plan my day to make sure all the chores in the house get done, hers and mine. And I would just do it without telling her so that I can eliminate her feeling guilty to even ask me. And it takes a load off her shoulders, which eliminates stress and there's more opportunity for her body to rest and get better. Which leads me to constantly reassuring them. So lupus warriors often feel like a burden to everyone around them due to their bodies not being able to do house chores, attending events or family gatherings, constantly being ill because lupus never ever ever takes a break and they don't want to seem like they're complaining the whole time but they can't help feeling so ill every day. So I constantly reassure my mom, it is okay, I understand, you did not choose to have lupus and no one can help your body feeling the way it does. And I can see every day that despite how you are feeling, you still wake up, you get dressed and start your day. 
if it was me, I don't think I'd be here today. <laughs> I would have given up a very long time ago already. And I tell her, I would rather take on your responsibility and work that little bit harder and do more things than the average family member would do just so that I can have my mom alive with me. I know it sounds dramatic, but it's the utter truth. And I reassure her, it is okay. It is absolutely okay. No one is upset or disappointed. In fact, quite the opposite. We are so proud of you for not giving up, for tackling lupus head on and for always being there for us, even though you have so much to handle already. I love you and don't worry. Please don't worry or stress. I got it. And even sometimes (laughs) when I feel like I don't have everything under control and I can't complete everything, I still try my absolute best and I still make sure I don't say things that might make her feel guilty even if it's unintentionally, because it can definitely be very overwhelming for the family member too. Like, yeah, sure, I got it, don't stress. (laughs) Meanwhile, your brain's wires are like glitching because you don't know where to start. (laughs) But then I just start and somehow I do it. And I must say, God is so good to our family in that way. So just to recap, the advice I would give is ask questions, take initiative and constantly reassure. I hope this can help at least one person out there. Our fifth interview is with Craig. His wife, Michelle, has lupus. How does it feel to have a partner with lupus? Very frustrating. It is, it is very difficult for the partner, the healthy partner, um, to understand it. It is uh, not a pair of shoes that, that I would be able to fill. My wife is um, much stronger than me. Uh, when when a normal person gets gets sick, a normal person gets better within a week. When a person with lupus gets sick, it is constant. It is another two, three weeks on top of the normal pains and fevers and everything that they go through. And... Um, yeah, it's you got to have a lot of you got to have a lot of sympathy and empathy, which most partners, including myself, lack. Um, we we just won't understand the the constant the constant pain a person goes through, with the the constant feeling sick. Um, if if uh, if your partner one day doesn't have pain they will feel nauseous and when they don't feel nauseous they got headaches constant headaches and when the headaches are gone then they got the sniffles and then the sniffles turn into uh, a chest infection so it is <clears throat> it is very difficult to to understand the concept of lupus and it is very difficult to to be able to to know what your partner is going through my only advice for for a person who is a partner to a person who has lupus is oh just when when you see your partner is feeling sick you just got to support them and uh, there's nothing really you can do uh, they they take medication, they're on their medication, but they still feel sick. And you just got to be there. You just got to fill the gaps, um, constantly, constantly uh, tell them that it's that they can get through this, and just part it with them. That's the only way. It's uh, you when you married, you married through thick and thin, and <laughs> you know sometimes it's just. Uh, more difficult than most days and uh, whenever your partner is is feeling down or feeling sick or got pain again just uh, the, the only thing that gets me through that is knowing how strong she is and you know every day she lives with that pain and now she's got more pain on top of it and it's just a you know you just got to Put yourself in her shoes. It's uh, the first thing I think of is is uh, would I handle that pain? You know, um, not just the the day pain. It's it's the 
full 24-hour pain. When they go to bed, they're in pain. When they wake up, they're in pain. Or they've got a rash and the rash is burning. Um, there's no pain, but then it's it's a burning sensation and it's just an irritating sensation. So it's like having toothache constantly, you know. And there's nothing you can there's nothing you can do besides support them. It's a it's a very difficult <clears throat> it's very difficult for the for the healthy partner to to be able to do that. But there's yeah, your your love must be stronger than what the disease is. And if you let the disease win, then it's uh, what's the point of loving someone? The um, love will will literally conquer all. Our next interview is with Rina, and her daughter has lupus. Hi. My name is Rina and my daughter, now aged 15, was diagnosed with lupus and RA at the young age of 5. She has an older brother aged 19 who is fit and healthy and has been an absolute rock to her and to us as family. So how does it feel having a child with lupus? This is very depressing indeed and overwhelming to say the least. Yes, it's a daily struggle where you never know what tomorrow holds. Different symptoms can appear within the same hours of one day. Sometimes one don't even know if it's lupus related or just something else. The constant worry is draining on your mind and soul, as I just want to wrap her up in bubble wrap and keep her safe from this disease. But as the time goes by, one realizes that this is not possible. They are still children, normal children and a blessing from God. They have their needs through their different stages and ages of their lives. They need to explore, learn, go to school, take part in activities, make their own memories. And this takes time to absorb and accept. In the beginning and with the initial diagnosis, it was very scary. We felt alone. Back 10 years ago, even less people knew about lupus. Even some doctors did not want to treat my daughter. It was tests, x-rays, bone marrows, scans, hospital visits, medicine trials, failures and side effects. But I can say we survived our worst days up till now and we appreciate our good days. Today, with the grace of God, support of family and friends, the best possible doctors and specialists, we take each day as it comes and tackle the challenges we face with lupus. Some advice that I, on a personal level um, and from experience, can give would be regular checkups with the correct doctors and specialists um, as suggested, including all the testing when required. Um, even if it goes well, um, if your child looks fine, just do the tests in any case. Identify and get to know your child's lupus triggers. As you know, lupus affects everyone differently. Remember your child is unique and lupus differs from one to the other. Share this with their close friends, family, teachers and of course with the child so that they know what to look out for. A difficult one but needed. Avoid sun exposure and if in the sun, sunscreen 50 plus and hats. It makes it easier if everybody in the family or friends, you know, um, join in on wearing the hats and doing the sunscreen. We can't let our kids not live, but try to avoid infections where possible. So if you know of someone who is ill, Try avoiding them until they get better um, because the immune system is suppressed. Just um, also if they if they understand, then obviously they'll understand if you just stay away for a little bit. Avoid takeaways where possible and eat and snack on healthy foods. Although I must say and admit when lupus flares are bad, my daughter does not have the best appetite and in that time I give her the food that she wants as giving meds on an empty tummy has its own side effects. Try stay as active as possible. 
Your child's body will tell them what they can and can't do. It will also help with mobility on bad days and get their minds off their current situation and a possible flare. Ensure medicines are taken as prescribed and where possible. Read up on the meds, what it's for, what are the side effects, short and long term, and why is it prescribed. I know with uh, my daughter we had to stop quite a few meds due to side effects. Um, her body was just rejecting. So yeah, it's important to understand why, you know, why you're taking it, what is it for. When your child is ready to let to for them to learn more about lupus and the condition. Let them learn, let them read up, let them ask questions. This will allow them to know more about their condition and be able to answer questions to their friends if needs be. It will dispel possible fear, depression and gain valuable insights. And just to sum it all up, just remember, you are not alone in this. Lastly, I will read a piece written by Una von Rein from Andrea's Gift, who has lost her daughter, Andrea, to lupus in 2018. The day my life changed forever. Losing someone you love through death is painful beyond words and very personal. Society does not prepare us for death or the loss of a loved one. When death happens, you experience feeling of shock, disbelief and confusion, even if the person was ill. As a mother that lost my 30-year-old daughter from lupus, I can only speak of my own experience as grief is unique and an unpredictable experience. No parent expects to lose their child to death and it's a very harsh reality to live with. Once the funeral is over, the grief journey starts and there is no end to it. You just learn to live with the pain. There's no right or wrong, no method, time frame. It's a lifelong process. In the beginning, I dealt with what if, denial, anger, and some days I was paralyzed with pain. I had no idea what the future held for me and my husband as we were very, a very close family in the last year of her life. I was very involved in caring for her as she spent long periods in hospital. I realized my response to grief can keep me in sorrow and dark, a dark pit of despair, or I can find purpose and direction for the future. Direction for me came in the most unexpected way when I started to ask questions. Why did we as a family know so little about lupus? And we most certainly did not know you can die from the disease and were there any support in South Africa? I recall the conversation I had with Andrea while she was in hospital where she expressed her desire to help others lupa patient in public hospitals. That is how Andrea's Gift Foundation was born, a story that started with tragedy but now is a story of hope. Too often in grief we forget that our spouse and family are also grieving. They may grieve differently than you but their pain is no less than yours. Don't make this a solo journey. Keep family relationships together and embrace them in their pain. Ask for counseling when you need it. This is very tough, a tough journey and in my experience you cannot do this on your own. As I entered my fifth year of grief, I can honestly say I would not have been able to survive emotionally if it was not for my deep-rooted faith in Christ. This experience has shaken me to the core and is life-changing. Grief can build strong character and produce humbleness which comes from the place of suffering and produce empathy and compassion. I am, a new I am on a new fresh journey in my faith with much understanding about human suffering. Una van Rijn, grieving the, grieving the loss of a loved one. 
That concludes our podcast for today. I'm sure that these interviews has touched your heart as it has touched mine. It is such an inspiration to hear family members talk because in it all we realize how much they really care. I hope that listening to your their advice has given you some ideas to help your warrior if you are a family member. Remember it's better to spend quality time with your family members than you doing chores, cooking, washing, all those things that that takes all your spoons. Rather enjoy a meal, a movie with your family than lying in bed because of all your duties because all your duties took your spoon. This is a difficult step, but you have to do it. Thank you for listening. Please please share 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 with family and friends and follow and like our profiles on social media. Susie Eagles Flight, Lupus South Africa and Andreas Gift. We would appreciate your feedback on this podcast and please review this podcast on this platform whether it's Google, Spotify or YouTube. Please be sure to tune in next month for another podcast. Bye-bye. I will stand by you. I will help you through. When you've done all you can do. And you can come.